Hey, 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 what is up? What's happening? Happy Tuesday. I hope you are well. Hope you're rocking and rolling. <clears throat> We're going to have some fun tonight. Let me just check something real quick. Drop me a comment. Let me know who's on. What's up? Uh, I see Christine. I see Andrew, billionaire Andrew. I see Don. What's up? I see some rock stars on here. We got Tampa in the house. Very nice. Noel. Okay. So first, I'm going to I'm going to start off by suggesting that you register for our Thursday training. I got a Thursday training. I got my good friend Cap Chatfield who went from 5,000 followers to 1.5 million followers in 6 months by leaning on his niche by leaning on his brand, which he is in the faith arena and uh, someone we had speak at our faith over fear event. And um, I actually have him coming in. I'm doing a VIP day with him, but at eight, eight o'clock PM Eastern on Thursday, I'm doing a free training with him. He's going to break down. How do you grow so fast? How do you grow so fast? And so that's at 8 PM Eastern. If you want to register for that, you can, it's free higdengroup.com forward slash followers, higdengroup.com forward slash followers. Tonight, we are going to talk a little bit about how to grow your faith and move through fear. And that is something, what's up, Justin? Let me, Justin, run here. And that's something that I'll share. You know, I, I just asked Holy Spirit to speak through me, you know, before I hopped on here. So we'll see where, we'll see where we go here. But I um, oh, appreciate it. Appreciate it, Kella. You're awesome. You're awesome. And, um, <clears throat> and so 10 months ago, I think probably some of you know, maybe most of you, maybe all of you, I don't know. Uh, what's up, Naples, Florida? I've been, uh, I've been in and out of Naples for, what have I been in and out? Um, 23 years. And so uh, we were just at um, Continental downtown on Third Street. So great place. Great place. Good food. Holy moly. So good. But anyway, 10 months ago, I um, had been searching for multiple years. I knew that something was missing. I'd had a lot of financial success. I'd had a lot of marketing success. Had spoken on a you know, bunch, of, bunch of stages that were awesome. All of, the, all of these things you know, were awesome. But uh, something was missing. And 10 months ago, I found that thing that was missing. And, uh, and it was God. It was God. It was Jesus. And um, that has completely changed my life. And so we have been running a annual business event every year for 10 years. So we started in 2013. It was called uh, Top Earner Academy. And then over the years, we kind of played with the name a little bit. The last few years was Rank Makers Live, which is based on our membership. But this year, uh, because of this newness in my uh, life and this newfound hope, uh, we changed it to Faith Over Fear. And let's see if I got it. I hope I do. Okay, so <laughs> I bet very few of you have this, but um, every year we do at, at least 2019, last year and this year, we did custom room keys. Okay. So 2019, it was this one. How many got this? Drop a one if you have this one. Okay. How many got this one? It says stay classy for those on Instagram. And then last year we did this one. These are hotel room keys, right? <laughs> this one, pretty goofy. Who's got both of those? I'm just curious. And then this year we did, we talked about faith. We changed it to faith over fear. After 10 years of running a uh, annual business event, this year we changed it to faith over fear. So if you got all three, I'm impressed. Who's got all three? Anyone got all three? Not too many of you, I'm willing to bet. But we changed it to faith over fear because 
I found what was missing in my life. And I thought, you know, up and up until then, or up at, really up until 2020, I thought that, well, if only I was making more money, if only I was reaching more people, if only I had more, you know, if I spoke on more stages, if only I had more clients, if only I had more, 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 more. And, um, but I got more, you know, my first uh, million dollar year was 2013, my first million dollar month, 2014, my first million dollar day, 2015, my first $3 million day, um, I think it was 2018. And none of that stuff changed the way that I felt about myself. I was still struggling with betrayal issues, struggling, struggling with trust, struggling with not feeling important. And so <clears throat> when I found the kingdom, when I found the kingdom and, and it fixed the wounds that I had been trying to fill with everything but the kingdom, I have to share the source of my hope. What kind of person would I be if I didn't? So Im imagine that you have, let's say that you have your favorite mentor. You know, some of you love, I don't know, Ed Milet. Some of you love maybe Cardone. Maybe some of you love Tony Robbins. Like who, who's your favorite mentor? Who's, who's like just the guy for you, man? Like, or the girl, right? Who's the guy or the girl for you? Let's, let's give some shout outs. Judy, you're very kind. Judy says me. That's very kind. Who's, who's like, like, this is my man. Okay. Some of you are being, this wasn't a call out to, all right. Tim story. Tim story is amazing. We had him speak. I think at our 2020 event, uh, Eric Worre, Jesse Lee, you know, rest in peace. You know, the world definitely misses Jesse. Um, Eric, Eric, Eric actually spoke at one of my very first events in this, in this space. This was called the, <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh, he actually spoke at our event that we didn't realize the acronym. He spoke at our pro marketing summit. Not the best acronym, not the best hashtag. Okay. But I had him, I had Mark Hoverson, I had Dave Van Hoos. Um, who else we have? I can't, I can't remember who else, but it, it was incredible. And I've been uh, very grateful. I was recently on Eric's uh, podcast and Eric is, uh, you know, definitely inspirational and you know, we root for him big time, but imagine, okay, John Maxwell, some of you saying, some of you saying Todd Falcone, right? Victoria, you see what I'm saying? We didn't realize this till it was a little, a little too late. Gary V, right? But imagine your favorite guru, your favorite mentor. They go and they learn something that radically changes them. It radically, it changes their heart. It changes every relationship in their life. It changes the vision of who they want to become. But they don't tell you about it. They keep it in a secret, right? They just, they just, you know, they write it down in a secret little tablet and they... They shove, they shove it in their drawer, never to share. What kind of mentor would that be? And so with uncovering this incredible relationship, because that's what it is. And, and I, some of what I say, you're, you're, some of you may not like. But I used to use, you know, God and universe interchangeably. And no judgment if you do, but I'll tell you why I don't. I'll tell you why I don't anymore. Because I have a relationship with my Heavenly Father. I don't know how to have a relationship with the cosmos, with the stars. I don't, I don't, know, how, I, I don't know how that works. But I can, I can envision and I have a relationship with my Heavenly Father. And it's, and it's changed me. I've become, instead of independent, trying to, trying to be my own savior and me trying to figure everything out and everything on, on my back. And if it's going to be, it's up to me, right? Instead of that, I'm very dependent. I've learned God's design. We're to cast all our anxiety on him because he cares for us. We're to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. 
We're to tame the body, make it our slave. We're to renew our mind. And so with that relationship that is so sacred to me, that is literally the greatest thing that I have. Now I, and I got some great things. I have an amazing wife. I have amazing children. I have, I have amazing things that I'm so, so grateful for. But nothing, nothing is like that relationship with Heavenly Father. Nothing. And I lean on him daily. And I ask him for help daily. And so I, I share that with you because what kind of trainer would I be if I learned something that radically altered every fiber of my being and I didn't share it with you? I kept it. No, no, no. Don't talk about, don't talk about religion. Don't talk about politics. Don't you better not talk about it. See, if I don't talk about it, what that means is either I care more about money than my relationship with him, right? Because if I don't want to offend anybody, I better not talk about it. I might lose, lose a customer. I've lost customers. I've lost clients. You know, we had people come to our event, didn't like how strong we talked about it. We did. But if I don't talk about it, then that means I'm more, I more want to, protect my little temporary fiefdom here than I do strive for eternal glory and strive to make him the priority. Now there's some valid reasons, right? And I can think of, I can think of one just out of a lack of understanding. So maybe you were church hurt. Maybe you don't want to talk about faith in your business because you were church hurt. You were judged. You were shamed. Maybe you were lied to. Maybe you were abused or, or traumatized, right? Maybe you were treated very poorly from someone in the church or someone that represented the church or even the head, head guy or whatever. You have to understand there's a difference between being church hurt, which oh, by the way, Jesus was also church hurt and being hurt by God. There's a difference. There's a difference between being judged or treated less than by man versus the love of your heavenly father. And so let me explain how I see faith after, you know, I know, hey, listen, I've only, I came to Christ 10 months ago. Some of you have been with Christ for 30 years, 40 years, your whole life. <clears throat> I've been very blessed to be surrounded with amazing mentors, amazing scholars even, that have helped me. The guidance of the Holy Spirit, which is number one. I used to open the Bible, read a verse or two and be like, oh man, oh, what time is it? Uh, and I actually realized, I later learned what that actually meant. It means when you're so full of darkness, light, light doesn't feel good. Because I was so full of darkness. I was so full of brokenness. And not that I'm all fixed. We're, we're all, we all fall short of the glory. You know, we all fall short of the glory. But man, is it different now. And so faith, after, you know, pretty intense study around this subject... Again, only 10 months, only 10 months, but that's every single day in the word. That's multiple mentors. That's multiple Bible studies, et cetera. And some of you know the Bible so much more than me. So I'm not, I'm not boasting. Some of you can out scripture me very easily. You can sword fight with me and just rattle off, you know, <laughs> scripture like, like crazy. Um, but here's what I understand. Faith and fear are ways of being. So faith, I used to think was a mindset. I used to think that, you know, faith was just a mindset. Like, yeah, I believe in God. Hey, something's out there. Hey. Right? That's, that's not faith. Faith is a way of being. So you know you have faith. You know you walk by faith, not sight. When you were stepping in, not relying on your sight. So if you only give when you got more than, then you're living by sight. You're not living by faith. When you're making irrational moves that lack logic. When you're stepping out into an arena that may not make sense to most people. 
So I'll give you a perfect example from our event, from our event, a perfect example from our event. So 2019, we sold 2,200 tickets. We're like, all right, 2020, game on. So we booked the room, 5,000 people. We're going like, what? I mean, we're swinging for the fences, man. Like we are going to make it rain. Because how many people in our space get 5,000 people in a room? Not many, not many anymore, right? And so 2020, we're going to go big and then something happens. Some of y'all may have heard of it. And so we had to move that contract from 2020, which they, they did, no problem, to 2021. Well, 2021, that thing was still going on. You couldn't get 5,000 people in a room. And so I'm like, hey, yeah, you know, this thing's going to work out. And they said, the hotel said, no problem. Just pay us $700,000 and we'll let you out of the contract. I'm like, hmm, what else, what else you got? <laughs> you know, let's, 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 let's make a deal. And so we moved it to 2023. And so 2023, we got this humongous contract. And I got some amazing speakers lined up. And I asked myself, who would be perfect? Like who would be amazing? Who would be like just just so perfect to get for this event? And John Maxwell was the answer. He's the guy. As of last month in August, you may know him for other stats, but to me, his most impressive stat, he's brought over a million entrepreneurs and business owners to Christ. Yes, he sold 34 million copies of his books. Yes, he's written 88 or 90 books, something like that. Yeah, he's spoken on 13,000 different stages around the world. But he's about a million. And he's got receipts. He's got names and emails. A million. Incredible. It's amazing. And so I think John Maxwell, man, he'd be perfect. And then and then I I I hear his rate and I'm like, ooh, ow. Right. If you've been doing this for a long time. You can, you can charge a pretty penny. And then we got the idea and concept from his, from his team of, hey, maybe we do a, master, a mentorship with him. And if I want to go all in, I'm already roughly a million dollars in expenses. But if I want to go all in, it'll be about a quarter million. See, that doesn't make sense. But in prayer, I got, you need to go all in with him. You need to go all in. So I stepped in faith. Did I have some fear? I had some fear, but my way of being was in faith. Because you know if you have faith or fear by how you show up, by your state of being. So did I have some fear? I had some fear. But my state of being was of faith because I moved forward. So we moved forward, hired him, put him on the line, boom, worked out. It was amazing. He's incredible. How many, how many loved John Maxwell at the event? Was he incredible or what? Awesome. Just the perfect. Just so you you literally you couldn't dial up a more perfect speaker for our event. Just just amazing. And then we did a super VIP luncheon with them. Then we did our mentorship meeting with them. It was just unbelievable. And now we have, you know, we're rocking our, our 12 month mentorship. Our first call with John Maxwell is on the 19th, I believe. Yeah, the 19th. So for those of you that are in the Higdon Maxwell mentorship program, 19th, that's your first call with, with John, John and I. It's going to be a blast. But see, that didn't make logical sense. You mean you're you're in the hole a whole bunch and you're going to go bigger in the hole? Like that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? It didn't make sense. I stepped in faith. So faith is a way of being. Okay. When something I'm going to cover tomorrow morning, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to calm myself. But my good friend Tyler shared this story and I had to dig into scripture about it. So when they were crossing, when Joshua was leading the crossing of the Jordan with the Ark of the Covenant. They were crossing the Jordan River, fast moving river, and it was at high tide. It was it was at like, you know, the height, right, which is about 10 feet. 
God told them, hey, when you're about to cross the Jordan, I'm going to take care of you. As soon as your priest's feet hit the water, just, just, just go into the river. So imagine holding the Ark of the Covenant, like the most, you know, prized possession in of all time ever, right? And, and so, but they're instructed to walk into this raging river 10 feet deep. And they, they walk in, water stops. And in fact, they stand in the middle of the river and let everyone pass by. You know what that represents? When you step out in faith, you're going to lift other people up. When you step out in faith, you are an example. And people will see your example. Because the city built on the hill can't be hidden. A lamp isn't meant to have a bowl thrown over it. Right? It's meant to shine. So when you step out in faith, you are lighting the path for others. You're inspiring others to do the same. And that's exactly what they did. More on that tomorrow. So I'll, I'll dive into the scripture and everything with you tomorrow, 9 a.m. And so then that begs the question then, well, what is fear? Fear is the opposite. Fear is, I know I got to do something, but I just don't want to... Uh, I'm nervous on what'll happen. Fear is I found this amazing source. I found I found God. I found Christ, or or whatever the example is for you, right? And I'm not saying religion wise, but maybe it's you know it could be something else. It doesn't have to be around religion, right? Faith and fear aren't necessarily just you know religion, but you find you you figure out that something in your life needs to be addressed, but you're too scared to mess up what you currently have to address it. So you avoid the tough conversations. So this, this is what keeps you in a okay career, not a great career. So the last job that I had 18 years ago, decent money for a kid that didn't finish high school on time, never finished college, making about 80,000 a year, decent. No one around me thought it was a good idea for me to leave that job. They're like, what are you gonna do about benefits? What are you gonna do that? Right? I knew it wasn't where I was meant to be. I knew that that wasn't, this, this can't be it for me. I knew that. And that's not bashing a job. If you love your job, awesome. Some of y'all teachers love your job, awesome. Some of you firefighters, police officers, right? If you love your job, awesome. No, I'm not bashing a job. But I knew it wasn't my purpose. I knew that's not where I'm supposed to be. Now, if I know that, but I'm too scared. I, I don't address it. I'm just like, ah, maybe something will come along someday, right? Then I live in fear. I don't have faith that God could provide better. I don't have faith that, that something better could possibly happen when I know that this isn't the path for me. So it's a way of being. So you either, you got, you got one or the other, man. You either got faith and you're walking by faith. Now faith is in the hopes unseen. It's you seeing yourself. It's you, it's you seeing you on that path that may not make any sense right now. You may look at your resources and be like, how the heck can I ever do that? How can I ever pay for my benefits? There's no way. See, some of you are shackled in your life in a job you don't like because you're scared of losing the benefits and you'll justify it and you'll say, well, I got, I got diabetes, man. I got, you know, my, my kid got allergies. You'll justify it. Let me tell you, if you go out there and you make a big enough difference, you can, you can pay for benefits. They may not be cheap, but you could be living your life's purpose. Like, I, I mean, just imagine, I don't know if this is one of the questions, but like, Hey, did they live their life's Hey, did you live your life purpose? No, I don't want to mess up the benefits. Doesn't that sound crazy? See, we make really crazy things seem normal. Let me say that again. We make crazy things seem normal. Like holding on to resentment forever. We make that normal. It's just normal. Oh, you're, you're still mad about that? Yeah. 
one of the Proverbs, I want to say, I think it's 12. It says, the hand of the diligent shall rule while the lazy are put to forced labor. Now, that sounds like slavery, right? Forced labor. But how many people are in a job they don't like? They're in a career they don't like, but they're making too good of money. Can't leave. I better stick here. That's forced labor. And it may not mean physically lazy. It could mean intellectually lazy. Too lazy and too much in fear to address the actual issue. The hand of the diligent. What's a diligent? Earnest, steadfast, never wavering, moving forward. And so if I have just one suggestion for you, it's walk more by faith than fear. And you know if you are or not, because just, just look at your life and look at where you're at. And are there areas of your life that are incongruent with who you want to be? And are you addressing them or are you settling for them? Because if you're settling, then that means you're afraid that it could get worse or you're afraid can't do any better. God couldn't possibly provide any better. And that is a lack of faith. That's not just living in fear because you don't just live in fear. At the same time, you also lack faith. How many are getting help from this? Is this helpful to anybody? I know I'm just kind of ranting and riffing. I don't have a prepared PowerPoint for you or anything. And so some suggestions for you. So drop a one if you want to truly live more by faith than fear. Noel does. Noel dropped it before I even I even asked it. So if you want to live more by, by faith than fear, first of all, you've got to learn to speak to yourself more than you listen to yourself. And so, uh, you know what? I think I got this on my phone. Let me see. There's something that I read out loud every day to myself. There's a few things. Let's see if I can pull this up. So what do I mean? First of all, they kind of sound the same, don't they? I'm suggesting to you that you listen to yourself, that you currently listen to yourself more than you speak to yourself. I'm suggesting you speak to yourself. And you can speak to yourself most powerfully, in my opinion, is from the Bible. It's from the Bible. And so this is something, this is a set of things. And here's what I'll do, because I know people are going to ask for this. I will post this on my Instagram story. So feel free, go there. I'll do it here in a little bit and you can screenshot it or something. But I read this every day out loud powerfully. Okay. So from the first part is from Deuteronomy 28. Blessing shall come upon and overtake me. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed with increase. I'm blessed wherever I go. My enemies are defeated before me and flee before me. I'm blessed wherever I set my hand. I'm blessed with my children where I live. The Lord blesses me with good treasure. You know what good treasure is? That's from, uh, that's like, uh, I think it's Proverbs 10, I think. 10 or 22 or 10, 22. I don't know. Um, but it's like the Lord will, um, the Lord will add to you. Uh, the Lord will make you rich with no sorrow. That's good treasure. Good treasure is all good, no bad. Okay. I'm blessed with all the work of my hands. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I shall lend to many nations. Romans eight thirty one. If God is with me, who can be against me? Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With the Lord at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Psalm 16, 8. I am strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Ephesians 6, 10. You bless me indeed. You enlarge my territory. Your hand is with me and you keep me from evil. 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. That's a prayer of Jabez. My way is prosperous and I shall have good success. What's good success? Nothing bad. 
we all know the term more money, more problems. This is saying more, more, more money, no problems. And so I'll, I'll share this. I'll post it up on Instagram right now in the stories. So you can check it out if you want. I don't have another way to get it to you. Let's see. Uh, No, well, I'll post it later. I'll post it later. <laughs> I don't feel like messing with it. And so you guys speak to yourself. Stop listening to yourself. And, and guys, I had a breakthrough today. So today I had a breakthrough because I realized that there was a part of me that still thought growth was painful. That still thought growth was slow. That still thought I wasn't powerful. And these are all things that don't have to be true. You don't, you don't have to have that growth is painful, that growth is slow, that you're powerless. You don't have to have those and you don't have to believe those things. You don't. You can believe that you are powerful, that you are co-laboring with Christ, that you have dominion over this planet. That you do have power within you. And so... My big breakthrough on Friday, and this is what, when you're doing the work, this is what happens. You have some weeks, you got two, you get two breakthroughs. This past week, I've gotten two major breakthroughs. So my big breakthrough was that over these last several months, I have been trusting of God. There's been many, many things that didn't make sense. Go to this men's retreat, go to this place, attend this real estate event. I'm like, what? Why, why am I doing this? Read this book right now. <laughs> like I've had all these like nudges from God to go do this thing. Go pray for that waitress. Go, go, you know, pray for the AC guy. And he turns around, his name is Jesus. So I'm like, this is crazy. And, and so I have trusted God before it's been several years up until Friday where I didn't trust myself because I didn't want to achieve the same way I did before. Okay. Is it Proverbs 10, 22? I, th I thought it was, I knew it was one of those. I didn't want to go back to empty success. I don't want to go back to, and, and I say empty, you know, empty is, is too harsh to be fair, but I don't want to succeed without bringing him glory. This temporary, you know, income, temporary status, temporary significance, temporary, you know, whatever, right? I want to do the greatest job possible while I'm here and my blood is, is pumping through my veins. I want to do that. But I don't, I don't want to just be really super wealthy or whatever and not honor him. It makes no sense. Like if you knew that I'm reading a book right now, my pastor gave me. And it's called the, I think it's called the treasure principle. Um, it's by Randy Alcorn. I'm surprised I remember that. Randy Alcorn. I think it's called the treasure principle. And he said, if, if you were in a country and you knew that the currency that you, and new, you learned of new currency. Okay. I know about y'all, but I remember back during that Iraq stuff, like people were buying up dinars. Anyone know what I'm talking about? They were buying up dinars because because when that when when, <laughs> when that currency got revalued, man, you're going to be wealthy. You're going to have billions of dollars, right? And and so you're you you realize that you you learn of this new currency, hmm. and then you learn that this currency is going to be phased out. Well. What would you do? Would you acquire as much of the old currency as possible? And, and, and like, you know, like, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I'm just going to focus over here, knowing that it's going away, knowing that it's temporary. Or would you maybe convert some? Guys, this is, this is worldly wealth versus eternal wealth. Think about it. 
So you can gain all you want here. You can be bajillionaire, right? Whenever, you know, as much as you want. But it's temporary, right? How temporary? I don't know, 100 years, if you live to be 100, right? I mean, you can get some work out of it. But if you, if you know, if you've been given the blueprint of setting up for yourself eternal riches, wouldn't you convert some of that by, by, by being generous? Luke 16 says, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when you, right, reach that, you know, reach eternal gates, you'll have people saying, yeah, man, that guy helped me. Yeah, she helped me out. Wouldn't you convert some of that currency? So how do you convert some of that currency? You convert some of that currency first by making God your priority, not money. See, most, most people, they find their, their status, significance, identity, safety, security from money. How much money do I got? And that's, that's what emotion I'll wear. That's how I feel, I'll feel about myself. But you to gain those things from the source, not the resource. Money is a resource. So it's okay to have it. Just don't have it have you. But most people, it's got them. It dictates every decision. How much, how much can I give? Well, how much I got? But if you knew, right? If you knew, okay, how, how do I convert some of this currency? You make God first. You be rich in good deeds. You show up with excellence. A perfect example is... Um, Man, I've really been struggling with, I, I keep messing up his name, is uh, Joseph. Perfect example. So Joseph, I covered this a couple of days ago. Joseph, while a slave, was so good at his job that Potiphar, a pagan master, saw that God, God had favor on this kid. And God brought favor. Right from, from uh, Genesis 12, the blessing of Abraham. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. And so because Joseph showed up with excellence in a not great situation, he was the favored son of a very wealthy, a very wealthy father, Jacob. He was the favorite son of a wealthy father thrown into a pit, sold into slavery by his brothers. Yet when he arrives and he's bought you know, the uh, Potiphar buys him from the Ishmaelites and makes him, you know, his, his servant. And guess where the, does the servant start in middle management? No. Where's the servant start? Right. Cleaning the stalls, right? Probably the worst of the worst. They're of different religions, different races. Like let's put him at the bottom of the barrel, but he shows up with excellence. He rises through the ranks. He upgrades himself. He shows up so powerfully that the master's like, dang, man, like this guy's God has got to be good. Like whatever he does, man, everything prospers. He's, he's prospering my house. I'm going to put him in charge of everything. So it's not waiting until you get the corner office. It's working up to the corner office. It's not waiting till, you know, something happens and they give you a downline or whatever, or winning the lottery, it's you doing the work like you got to earn it. I heard something interesting the other day. I'm studying this book on um, Jewish um, concepts and business. And uh, they said that there's no, there's no word in Hebrew for winning money. There's only earning. They don't have that concept of winning money. It's like earning. <laughs> and so they are to earn. Very fascinating book. It's by, um, it really is good. It's called Business Secrets of the Bible. And what's this guy's name? Um, Rabbi Daniel Lappin. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's amazing. It's incredible. And so making God first, being generous, who can I help? 
showing up with excellence, speaking to yourself more than you listen to yourself. Because guess what happens when you listen to yourself? That's when you have worth issues. That's when you feel like you're not good enough. That's when you let all the strongholds, Pastor Allen talked a little bit about that at Faith Over Fear. That's when you let all the, the mindset stuff keep you down. That's when you hear the, well, you know, for if you want to have a breakthrough, you got to have a breakdown, right? You know, growth is painful, right? You, you, you think all these things that don't serve you. Speak to yourself. I'm a highly favored child of God. I know my father in heaven loves me so much because he sent his only son. He sent his first fruit. You know that concept? First fruit. And so I hope this is helpful. If you want more help around this, I would highly suggest, and you can, you can do this for free. You can, you know, nail it out. But we have um, different levels of mentoring programs because what you do need more time. Most people aren't going to change their life from, you know, tonight's life. But you need more time. And we have some incredible, incredible programs that could help you. You know, we do, uh, we are planning on cutting off the Higdon Maxwell mentorship program uh, when he does his first call, which is the 19th of October. But we also have some other programs that have already started and they mentor you. And I love what John Maxwell said in our interview together. He said, hey, listen, you can either you know, try to figure it out on your own or we can mentor you until you get it. Isn't that an interesting concept? And the thing is the difference between where you are and your potential is a tax you pay every year, every single year. If I would have invested in myself earlier on, I wouldn't have lost it all in real estate. I know that for certain but I prided myself on not hiring coaches and not doing this, not doing that. And so how long do you want to pay that difference between where you are and your potential? That's very costly. It's very painful. And you're going, you're running a race that has a finite. We want to help you become the most generous entrepreneurs on the planet. We want to help you be kingdom based business owners that shine so much light. They shine so much light that people wander to the source of your hope. And 1 Peter 3.15 says, when people wander the source of our hope, we're, we're to respond with gentleness and respect. We want to help you do that. And if you'd like to learn more about that, you can at higdengroup.com forward slash grow faster. Higdengroup.com forward slash grow faster faster. You get a free coaching call with us. We'll assess where you're at, where we might be able to help you. And we would love to do that. And if you're in one of our mentoring programs already, congrats. This is going to be an amazing, amazing year. Um, I'm just so excited to, to work with some new people and really help them over this new season and uh, build toward uh, Faith Over Fear 2024. It's going to be amazing. But just know that I'm rooting for you. And if you want to um, if you want to learn more about that, higdengroup.com forward slash grow faster. I appreciate you so very much. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. I know I kind of ranted kind of off the top here, but uh, I appreciate you so much. Thanks for being here. Bye, guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.